My name is Sam Potter, and for the last few years, my curiosity has led me on adventures around the world. But more importantly than the adventures themselves are the people that they've led me to. And the ones I've truly fallen in love with are those who are still deeply connected to the natural world. This series is about them, their passion for wild places, and how we might be able to find our way back to the wild. After our time spent foraging with Roshana Gray, Koa and I chased a swell to Jeffrey's Bay with a few new friends. We had a nine hour car party, arrived to a rainbow, and we surfed the most beautiful waves I've ever seen. As we surfed, we imagined this place when the world was still wild, and joked about a pride of lions keeping us in the water a little longer than we may have planned. And although the swell receded, these wild thoughts did not. So we headed inland to Kruger National Park. And in the wild South African bush, we found ourselves in the best of company and amongst the master trackers of the Royal Melwan. So there's myself, there's Jean, and then there's eight other rangers. And then we have uh, 10 trackers. Not, not as experienced as Lucas, but we have, we have 10 trackers here. So is Lucas one of the more experienced trackers? Yeah, at our, at our camp he's um, there's Lucas and there's Jonas. All the master trackers yeah. of the Royal Malwan. Yeah, and actually in, the, in South Africa uh, there were seven, one passed away, there's only six left. So this is what's quite special about us. And then we get to do it with uh, apprentices that are learning. That is cool. Yeah. The fact that you guys are like have people you're bringing out, passing on the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's cool that we actually like are here with both the master and the apprentice of both categories. Yeah. So we have the guide and the tracker. Master, apprentice, master, apprentice. So, and then you still need to attain hours walking on foot, uh, a number, a certain number of uh, encounters on foot, encounters being viewing dangerous animals, elephant, buffalo, lion, rhino. Leopard, non foot. So you'll need to also get that to get signed off like a pilot does with a logbook. Just stop Matt now. He's just picked up something. The three loop at the back one, two, three. There's the fingers. This is the lines. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll bring the talk. Should we get back in the car? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this just proves how good Lucas is as a tracker. I mean, we're driving along at 10 miles an hour. He's sitting on the front of the car and he can see that track, which we can barely see standing here. You see it? Yeah. You see the. Yeah. I guess I the fingers. Yeah, yeah. I can you see kind it. Of see Mara, it. You see it yeah. <laughs> but like barely. That's very, crazy. Very, very. I can see that. This for Impala. I know, I know. Oh, I'd be over here stalking the Impala thinking <laughs> I'm on to something. <laughs> but she's already out here. There's big ones here with a big pole. So it's just kind of cool to see what they're able to pick up on and which ways we start moving and the subtle signs, subtle tracks that they're able to pick up on. It's definitely something I can barely wrap my brain around. I just saw a male lion stalking through the bushes. You guys on the move. Oh my god. Oh my god. Crazy as you 
could just be walking by and have no idea that there's lines right there. dog tracks and hyena tracks and they're fresh too is it normal to see hyena tracks and dog tracks together like this no i will go around to the right and the fish you can find the, the wild dog yeah. and the hyena yeah. yeah wild dogs move yeah. quick so we gotta there's definitely something going on the vultures I've seen, I've seen the hyena there. The wild dogs are actually the most endangered predators in Africa. Reason being, they move such great distances and that's not really possible in our world anymore. But they're uh, also one of the most, actually the most successful predator in Africa. These are hyenas and wild dogs having a bit of a face off. This is crazy. Wow, look how beautiful the dogs are. Hyenas are taking chances here. I think we're about to see a fight or something. Are we about to witness a kill right now? Oh, we got a kill going on. Leopards in the fucking tree! Leopards in the fucking tree! Oh my god, in the fucking tree! What is happening? What is happening? Okay, let's just break down what's happening. A leopard made a kill. We pulled up when these hyenas were jacking the leopard's kill. The leopard runs up this tree, sits there. All the wild dogs are jumping up, barking at the leopard. The leopard's like looking down at everything. But now we're witnessing two carnivores just hanging out with each other. Wild dogs and hyenas just kind of like sniffing each other out, checking each other out. Like this is so strange and unheard of and lucky. Like even these boys who spend every day out here are just in awe and blessed to be seeing this. Like it's just, like how rare is this? Hyena, wild dogs, the leopard, one place, this, it is magic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lucas would notice the tiniest details. A shift in the wind, a broken branch, a bird who changed her tone. He'd follow the tracks of all sorts of creatures. Some stalked, some scurried, but all of which told a story. Tales of the bush written in the dust of the earth. A book only Lucas could read. At first, all I could appreciate was the obvious things. A lion, a leopard, the calming steps of giants. But I could see that with Lucas's great knowledge came great appreciation. And with every word, he opened my eyes to the intricacies of the natural world. Bringing the forest to life in ways that made me wish I too would spend a lifetime here. That evening, I got the chance to sit down with Lucas. And my first question was, when did you first learn to track? My father seen he knocked on the door. Wake up! So I'm from 11 o'clock in the night. The lions are coming. The donkeys are starting scared. He had a torch. See, the dogs are starting. The wind is blowing that side. The donkeys, all of them, she's starting running. 
that is my donkeys. I don't like the lion shit with my donkeys. I need these donkeys now. Go before the donkey tracks. The first lesson in how to track was finding your father's donkey. Yeah. And then from there, you followed the tracks into the wild, started tracking wild animals. Yeah. Tracking for the animals, for me, is the gift. You get me? It's the gift to see the animals, lion, leopard, elephant, mongoose, mice. I like everything in the bush. It makes me happy. To be a master, from my understanding, doesn't only mean that you are an excellent tracker. It means that all the trackers in your community have bestowed upon you the honor of being a master tracker. Okay. Not because of only your skill level, but what you've done for people. Yeah. Giving back to your community, giving back to fellow like. trackers, teaching people, bringing people up. You're a pillar in your community. What does it mean to you to have someone like Kevin? Kevin. When someone, because he, he obviously has a passion, he has a heart, he really wants to understand and to learn from you. It's not very easy to get to master track. I need to him to grow up. There's something I'm, I'm having in this mind here. I want to give to him. Then I want to teach him. I'm not lying. I'm not joking. I want to teach him. And with that, I convinced Lucas to let us observe Kevin's training session the following morning, which I didn't realize meant we'd be entering the wild on foot. A nerve-wracking idea, which only got more unsettling as we woke up to the sounds of roaring lions. I want to fight you guys. Watch out me. I'm very roaring. I'm the big one. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently Maposa, Maposa, the big one, is like halfway between us and the gate, which is like Andana was very close. We are not getting into a vehicle. We have opted to walk through this game park on foot. We're gonna try to track down some lions, I guess. Golden rule in the bush: don't run. If anything happens, you stay behind. Me, or Matt, or Lucas. If there's a situation, we might actually have to cause some of you to move aside. So either you'll follow me or Matt to safety, and then one of us may stay with, with uh, whatever the situation is with the animal to divert it, okay? okay. But don't run, that, okay. that's key, because that could result in a worse situation. Okay, you guys all good, eh? If ever you want to stop, just let us know. We all stop together. She's coming here and then she drink the water, little big water here. Then she's coming, starting to move. This one here also, big foot. Now you come and see the fresh mud here. You see it here? This, this one was like this, that the rano. She take it off, little bit off. Then she move here. So is this it a it. male or, or female? This is a male rano. How long do you think the rano walk here? Uh, I see the rano, she walk here. Should be three minutes ago. You see it's very wet. The rano starting here. That's so is guys. it more marking a territory here? Or yep, it's... yep, oh, okay. Yep. Once we move that direction. Can we just take a moment to say, if we didn't have all these guys with us, we'd literally be petrified right now. It's difficult to fold the rhino, but the rhino is very clever. She walking like this, then she come back, then she walking like this, then she come back, then she shoot straight. Lions hear that and then they come towards that noise. I can't see it here. The grass is very short. This is a buffalo. She's sleeping here around. Then you stop it listening. Then you get some time and see the buffalo very close to you. Walk, stop, listen. What do you think you know? This is for the birds. She's shouting.
Fillet is still fresh. Fillet. Mm. This is Rano. This is Colin. What just happened? We like, we crawled up. It was like proper, like uh, army stuff. Like we're army crawling on my camera. And like, he's giving us all these hand signals. Just like stared me in the eyes. And then like, oh, I just darted. Oh. Dude, and you could just feel like the dum dum dum. Yeah. Like you could feel it in your feet. Yeah. That was so crazy. Yeah. Cause I was like having to shoot with this. And I was like, had to steady my breath, but I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You. <laughs> Why is it? <laughs> I got a dope shot. I got a dope shot, like a wide one with the rhino in the background, and they like army crawled up right next to it. And we were just sitting there. Yeah. After watching Kevin in the field, we headed back to camp and celebrated a job well done. And I got to asking about his experience as an apprentice tracker. So how long do you have to live in the tent for? For two years. Excited to get out of the tent? Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna miss it. And why do you want to be a master tracker? There's only few master trackers in the world. And for us to lose that, uh, the knowledge that they've got, it's gonna be bad for the country, for the world. Yeah, so at least in the future, when I'm a master tracker, then I'm gonna pass that message to the young generation. And it's gonna be all thanks to the master strikers that are teaching me, working with me every step to achieve my goal. You make me feel very, very confident that we'll have many master trackers in the future. Thank I you appreciate so much. you. That's a promise. At the end, it's gonna help me. You think you'll be a master tracker? Kevin, one day then you come in again here. You say, what? You see how Master Trader said, hey, you joking or no, not joking? Because it should make me strong. It make me proud. It make me happy. <laughs> yeah, sure.